I am an instrument of knowledge. I am experiment. I will show you the stars. If only you will serve and obey me. Hey everybody, welcome back. And I've got another Astor Mickey on the bench. And uh, 1947, and of course, here's, you can see the photo from Radio Museum. And let's switch to the chassis itself. Uh, again, the case is with the owner. Getting a bit of a clean up, I suppose. And, you know, oh, and I've switched. Okay, cool. And our tuning. And there are all the controls. So, let's just lift up the... Uh, camera. Let's have a look at it. So it looks all complete. I mean, I've given it a cursory glance, but, um, and I have a look at the schematic. So, 6A8, 6B8, should be, um, 6 Victor 6, and should be a 5x3. And, for some reason, that does not look like a 5x3 to me. Oh, yeah. What is it? Where is it? Oh, it's a 6x5. Okay. Well, I'll leave it in there for now. A um, couple of cap cans. One there. Um, 24. Uh, 16, I think. And there is one more cap. And that's right there. And that's a cathode bypass. So 25 uh, microfarad at 40 volts. Thereabouts. And let's now... Have a look at the pinout because just because the schematic says you know five by three doesn't always mean necessarily mean that's what was done in the factory. All right, all right, I'll point to it. Let's have a look here. Okay, five by three pins four and six are the plate, so let's go straight there one, two, three, four. Yeah, five, six. Yep, but I've got a problem. Pin four and six have no pins. <laughs> uh, and five by three, I know pin one is no connection. And pins two and eight are the cathode. Or cathode filament combination. Nah, that's, that's definitely a... Uh, Wide up for a 5 by 3 so I can see. Yeah, definitely. All right, so um, we'll have to dig one out somewhere out of the box. Let's, uh, I can see a red and blue wire, as you can too. Yeah, right there. So that should be the um, output transformer. Just have a look. Uh, in fact, um, you can just see them there. The primary side are red and yellow, so well, that's going to be that red there because it's going to the plate of the 6v6. And the yellow, there's a yellow wire, and there it is there. So it's probably on a on the grid. Um, I'll check that on the schematic. But if they're feeding the output transformer, we should now get a signal as long as they're both working. Oh yeah, good. All right. What am I going to do? Um, get some power to it, and um, we'll just run some power tests. I think that's probably the best thing to do. Well, I've got my probes connected to uh, pins four and six of the uh, rectifier socket, and a little bit of power from um, Variac. And <laughs> I got no power at all coming through. Okay, so transformer or the on off switch. Um, I'll have to check the on off switch first. Um, no, it is, it's, it's on, but uh, yeah, they pack up as we know. So I'm going to try and measure, see. For a start, are we getting um, voltage and current coming through the uh, power line there? 
So I'm, what I'm going to do very, very carefully Clear when you don't want it. Let's go to AC power. God, things are tight in there. All right, I'm just going to give it a little bit of power. At 20 volts will do. And I should be able to measure that on the primary side and three point eight volts. I'm reading twenty two. Okay, I'll uh, have to get my head in there and cover the camera. So just give me a second to make sure that I'm actually touching it. All right, the power line checks out. I managed to finally get the probe on the right spot and um, 20 volts coming out of my uh, variac and I had about 19 coming out of um, out of the end of the wire ends there. So, and I tested it, nothing, absolutely nothing coming out of the output of the on-off switch. So, got to change that. Um, yeah, I might just do a patch job on it or, or I might just waste my time and replace the uh, volume pot now probably the easiest thing to do I guess a little bit of work and new volume pot is installed and the on off switch on it does work um, I buzz that out so all in uh, three wires there also got a, a 40k tap which is that um, little green wire there I think to do with the uh, tone of some sort. Anyway, let us now check out our power and see if we're actually getting anything out of the transformer. So yeah, that's on. And we'll just go directly to the plates. Go to AC. Let's give it a little bit of power and hopefully it's alive. Ah oh, yeah. That's pretty good. And I can see a dull guy lighting up too. So the only thing, I want to just check, make sure that the uh, filament is getting its power. So that's, uh, as I said, pins 2 and 8. So we should see a little bit of power, uh, some voltage on that. Yep, looking pretty good. All right, well, I know, I was, you know sometimes I, I feel comfortable checking the, um, given, given the thin power. Um, oh well, might as well, might as well. Let's see if we're getting some um, DC out of the uh, valve. And I've swapped out that, um, I got rid of that 6X5 and got a 5Y3 in there. And it pins out perfectly according to the wiring on the socket. So, let's see what we get. Nice and slow. And just give it a little bit of power. Oh, it's working well. To uh, 100 volts. Again, everything's looking good. I can't see any smoke. Uh, current limiter is nice and quiet. One sixty volts. Sounds like it wants to work. Getting something out of it anyway. And hold on. Getting some buzzing. Here we go. Cool. We'll uh, turn that off. Well, it does work. Okay. Not real well. 
but we've only just begun, like the song says. So we'll get rid of those um, those two main filter caps, and I'll work out where I'm going to place them. I've got some room up there, and I've got some room there too. And that shouldn't be in the way, even if we have to. Somebody else has to restring the dial. But it's about they're the only two places in the um, that um, cathode bypass on, and they're tiny, and uh, they can get they can go just about anywhere. So I will swap those two out, then we'll come back and we'll um, run another test. got these uh, two electrodes in and I end up changing that point one there to uh, make some room as uh, the uh, wire from the cathode to the first cap <laughs> the uh, insulation just perished it was falling off as I was moving things around so yeah that had to be done all right given that I've done this correctly I think I have let's give it some power and monitor our voltage right so yep I'm on DC that's all good so bit of power all good so far that's a that's a good sign. Yep, no smoke. All good. Bring it up a bit more. About 200 volts. That'll do. Hi, Troy. Oh, nice. Now, hi, Troy, on the show here. We go now. Uh, such a nice man. Uh, so, cool. So very understanding, you know. I jumped him three times live on air. And the voltage is nice and stable at 186. Nice. And the volume has come up considerably. Also, to how we value the work and the security guards. That's a nice. really big part of this. Nice. Okay, I was a bit worried <laughs> earlier when we had that, um, well, low volume, but um, I thought, I don't know, I don't know, um, I thought it might have been the volume pot, but um, certainly not, and um, it seems that I've got an exact same um, pot as the original, so um, all good. Okay, I'm just going to, um, <laughs> well, it's all done really, isn't it? Uh, but I'll get those uh, waxies out and um, then we'll um, check in, just run another test. But yeah, another one done and dusted. Nice. Well, as you can see, the cap's been done and there were really no issues. Um, I thought I had the camera recording, but I didn't, unfortunately. And I was showing myself uh, adjusting the IF cans and I was working on the first one. Um, and this is where I struck some problems. And um, I was able to um, adjust the uh, top coil, um, and then suddenly it would <laughs> the radio just went pretty much nuts on me. Um, it was um, distorting, crackling, um, or deep, deep crackles, you know, <laughs> almost motorboating, almost. Not quite though. And um, I thought, hold on, hold on, this is no good. So I. Um, what I thought I was showing was me jumpering another can in, and uh, that fixed the problem. So, the other th issue that was happening was I couldn't turn the, um, the volume off. So, it would just keep playing, and I thought, oh, shit, you know. But, um, it really, it was just that first can. People love free stuff. Oh. Get free punch repairs and that is 
just super duper. And what I'm getting now is the interference between stations, which I wasn't picking up before. So, but these stations, I wasn't able to get any, well, virtually anything on the um, the high end of the band. So, there we go. Um, one dud IF can that was working, but not well enough. So, um, anyway, I'm just going to go check through a few more uh, resistors on this thing. Gee, that sounds good now. And um, then we'll wrap this video up. But, yeah, sorry I couldn't show it to you guys. But, anyway, that was the problem. If you own an electric hair setter, you can now get droop-proof curls like never before. With new Kindness Heat Activated Conditioner. Spray it on, roll it up, and the heat activates the protein conditioner to give you extra body. Helps your hair hold up through wind and rain and just plain living. The Droop Proof Curl. Get it with new Kindness Heat Activated Conditioner from Clairol. Fantastic. Well, the Astor Mickey is done and dusted. Checked out um, the uh, resistors and I only need to uh, replace a couple. But all good. Let's, let's actually turn it on its uh, base. Let's power the thing up. Here we go. Again, always like he <laughs> used my Variac. Um, Just bring the voltage up. And that should do it. Antenna's connected. <laughs> we're, we're an evidence-based organisation, so, so we don't make numbers up. Right. We actually spend the time to independently consider uh, nice. you know, what are the priorities for the state and to think... And let's turn it off. Beauty! Beauty! Well, there we have it. That's still Mickey Dunn. And what I thought, you know, was just a matter of caps, and certainly was with those uh, electros, um, and then uh, finding out that um, that first IF can was um, really on its way out. So um, that, that really was the only major problem. And, like, that was a real easy one to do, as you can see. It's, uh, you can get to it quite easily. It's not covered with all sorts of components. Well, anyway, all done, guys. Again, thank you for watching. And, oh, yeah, I forgot to mention good old Elizabeth Montgomery. Uh, geez, I, I loved her as a kid and bewitched. And always thought she was a great looking woman. And that's not being sexist at all. No, no, no. She's, uh, to me, she's just very attractive. Always thought so. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed that clear old commercial. And hope you enjoyed this. So, I will catch you all again very soon, guys. Thank you very much. Take care. Have fun. Stay safe. Bye.